Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today I'm going to be looking at some of the changes that are going to be coming along to the Gwent, the Witcher card game, in the next patch released by CD Projekt Red based on some of the stuff they've revealed in their, their Twitch stream um, recently. Um, so let's have a look at some of the changes and how that's going to affect maybe people's decks, the way people play the game, and see some of those changes. Now, need to stress, these are only a small sample of the changes that are going to be in patch 0 0.8.17. There are actually around about, I think they said, 140 odd changes coming in the patch, but these are sort of like the the the, the big ones some of the, the the major changes if you like that people are definitely going to notice and feel the impact of so let's get started and have a look shall we first of all we have got clear skies which has been renamed actually to first light and basically what this card is going to do now it's going to have a secondary ability a secondary feature um, originally Clear Skies, the only thing Clear Skies did was Okay, sorry about that, motorcycle just went by outside really loudly um, Okay, back to First Light, Clear Skies Now, originally in the, obviously, current version of the game All, that, all this card does is clear any weather effects from the board And, um basically port any weather affected units back to their base strength. Now it turns out or it appears from what CD Projekt Red have been divulging from looking at all the, the stats that they have available to them from the, the beta is that not a lot of people are using this card in their decks. It's unless you're playing, you know, against people that use weather an awful lot like monsters for example it's not exactly a card that many people want to put into their deck and mess up their like rng when it comes to drawing cards because actually this this card has a tendency to actually bite you quite hard there's nothing worse and i'm sure many of you who have played in the beta have probably experienced it i certainly have where when you get into the later rounds certainly round three, the last round, you get stuck with this card, which does absolutely nothing for you. You know, you want to put units on the board to get strength, and you're stuck with a clear weather card, which doesn't do anything. Or, in the worst case scenario, and I've had it happen a couple of times to me in the game, where you get to that third round, you've got no cards, your opponent's got no cards, it all comes down to that one card draw, your opponent draws something, and you think, yes, I'm going to beat him. And you draw clear skies. And you think, no, why? Any unit card would have been, freaking, you know, and you end up losing the match because you draw this card. Well, that's going to be sort of alleviated now by the new ability, which is Rally. As you can see in the, the video above, basically what happens now is when you get this card and you play it, you have the option. You can either play its original effect and clear and remove all weather from the board and reset any weather affected units back to their base strength or you can choose to rally which means you actually get to play a bronze unit card from your deck on the board so in certain situations again where you get to find yourself stuck um, with this card in your hand and you, you're lacking strength but you know your opponent isn't going to be playing weather, you can now actually use this card to actually put a unit on the board and give yourself some strength, which I think is a great, great change to the card. Um, because obviously you, you do kind of need to run this card in your deck to counter against like monsters. And I think who else plays a lot of weather? Probably Gallagher, they have a lot of weather immune cards. So yes, Gallagher, just in case they do play the weather on you. But at the same time, it is a gamble having 
the card in its current form in your hand because you can be stuck with no unit strength if you have this card. Well now with the rally feature you can swap this card for a unit which is going to be a great thing to have. So now it means basically you're going to put this card in your deck because it's going to serve two functions. A it's going to protect you from the people that play weather and it's also going to give you the option of playing strong units. Only bronze though, that's the thing. So you've got to think to yourself, you've got to look through obviously your, your decks, your card collections, and make sure you've got a lot of high strength bronze units in there. Okay, so let's have a look at the next change then, shall we, that they reveal um, at the, um, it joined the stream. Northern Realms, the promote card. That is being um, changed very heavily and being nerfed quite a lot we could say basically in the current game what tends to happen is obviously northern realms they tend to spam out units they tend to use the faultus leader um they tend to buff those units quite high in strength they probably adrenaline rush them so they keep them on the board they probably then fault test to duplicate them so again they've got loads of units that they're going to retain then they hit the promote button which sets all those units to gold increases their strength and locks their strength their base strength then to that new level and basically what happens is because of that you've got no chance of beating them you can't remove the gold cards <laughs> you can't remove them you know you there's only a couple of cards in the game that affect gold cards and you know even the dematerium bomb will not reset these units back to their because their base strength's been altered basically so there's no real counter for them and obviously the northern realm decks that are able to you know with the rng get that combination going are just impossible impossible to contend with there's just no decks in the game that can do the removal because of course Gold cards aren't affected by weather. So basically what's happening is they're changing this card so that only... Um, so first of all, it doesn't provide any buff to base, base strength. So when you pr promote a card, yes, it goes up because of the Northern Realms faction ability, but the base strength still stays at the, you know, original level of the card. So, you know, so for example, let's take the, the poor infantryman, three strength unit, base unit. Yes, they can obviously thunderbolt it and stuff to buff it up, put the promote on it, but its base strength will still stay at three. And what happens then is at the end of the round, um, obviously the, the gold status is removed or... If the card is destroyed by obviously you know playing a counter card like a Yorveth or something like that, again the gold stratus is removed, and also that means the base strength of the card is reset. So when they promote the cards, say for example the poor infantryman, they fund the bolted him up, it comes out at three, they duplicate him a couple of times. You know, they fund the bolt it to add five strength, so it becomes eight. Then they promote it, and it becomes ten. Well, at the end of the round, at the start of the next round, it goes back to being a level three normal card, which is fantastic. If they've adrenaline rushed it, that is. At the start of the next round, it'll go back to being a normal level three bronze card. So it stops the Northern Realms from basically cheesing. <laughs> and I know the Northern Rails players are going to be absolutely destroyed by this change. They're going to be so unhappy. They're going to have to learn how to play a different strategy now. It's going to be brilliant. And that also brings us on to another change, which also affects kind of thing. The, the Commander's Horn. Now, again, we all know how the Commander's Horn works. Basically doubles the strength of any units in a row. The problem is, and it's a silver card, so obviously they can only have one in their, in their deck. 
but a lot of players get around this by playing medics and resurrections and stuff like that and specials some like you know like a um oh, what's that um there's a square tail card isn't it that basically lets you play the last special card again and basically you end up they end up basically spamming commander's horn just keep doubling up, doubling up, doubling up their row. Well, now, when you play Commander's Horn, it's basically got a new, it's got a new um, uh, category there, look, called Fleeting. And basically, the Fleeting is being added to certain cards throughout the deck, and Commander's Horn's one of them, where basically, after the card has been played, it is removed from the game completely. It doesn't go in your graveyard. There is no way to resurrect it. There is no way to copy it. There is no way to replay it. Once you've used it once, it's gone. So that will stop a lot of people doing the commander's horn spam, basically, in a game. So that is going to make a huge change. So again, and that's something you've got to look out for now on cards that are going to be changed to fleeting, which means you're not going to be able to replay them. You're not going to be able to recycle them. They're not going to go into your graveyard. So the cards that also get buffed and affected by cards in the graveyard will also be slightly affected by this change, which could be quite good, could be quite useful. Um, let's have a look at another card that they detailed was being changed. Um, the Operator. Now, we know how the Operator works currently in the game basically when played you can select a card in your hand or your opponent's hand and it is added and it's basically copied and added to both your hand and your opponent's hand so you basically you, you're duplicating cards but at the same time you're giving that same card that you're duplicating to your opponent and again it's another card that can be abused somewhat because of the resurrect medic decoy blah 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 playing in and out building up a lot of cards and copying a lot of units um so basically again they've changed this card um this card is now relentless and fleeting so again there we've got the fleeting which means as soon as it's played and it's removed it can't be played again. There's no way once it's in the bin, you know, it's gone. It's done. There's no way to pull it back. It's not going to be in the graveyard after the end of the round. Um, and it's also got this new feature called Relentless. Now, basically, what that means is that once the card is played, there is no way to remove it from the board. You can't pick it up. You can't decoy it. Okay, the only way to get it off the board is to destroy it. And with it being a silver card, it's obviously open to any attacks from cards that can deal damage to silver card to basically non-gold units. So it stops people from basically being able to replay this card numerous times. And again, I think that's going to be quite a good change. Again, depending obviously who you're playing and the, the, the deck you're playing, they can basically, obviously, they know how to use the operator to use cards, to duplicate cards to their, their advantage. And, yes, stopping, stopping basically spam chains. That's what they're doing. And that rolls in nicely to a change they're making to medics, where basically, again, they've added a new... Um, if you like terminology to medics called permadeath where again when they are are removed from the board there's no way to res there's well there's, there is there are ways to resurrect them but only special cards only certain special cards can replay a medic that's been played so again it stops someone like Siegfried being able to resurrect priestesses and Blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, you get that thing where they're just pulling back card after card after card after card. Spam, 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 spam. Yeah, 
done. Finished. That combination is completely nerfed now. Because, again, once the medic's gone, there's no way you can't replay it. Unless you've got a special, special card. And not a lot of people are going to have that. And it's going to break up a lot of decks that people use online. It's going to break up a lot of strategies of certain factions. And, again, it's just going to just re-level the playing field somewhat. Which is going to be nice. It's not now going to be as important to have decks full of medics because you can't reuse them a lot. Uh, what else have we had change coming in the patch? Um, yes, okay, they've made a change to Dandelion. Now, originally, obviously, when you got Dandelion, he was, I think, a two strength unit. I think he was two strength in the game before the patch. I may have to check that. And he basically did a commander's haul. So he basically doubled up the strength of all the units on the melee row. Well, they've changed him, basically. They've now made him four strength. And now what he does, he adds two strength to every non-gold unit that appears on the battlefield. So basically, you put him down, he gives you four strength. Then every time you play a non-gold unit, or, or, and this is the key thing to remember here, or your opponent plays a non-gold unit, they receive a two-strength buff. So, a card that can be very useful, I think, in certain decks, again, where, I suppose, for the likes of Northern Realms, because he is a Northern Realms card, he's not neutral, um, where you've got, like, the, the Reavers, the Poor Infantrymen, uh, the Blue Stripes Commandos, etc. And you've obviously got the full test leader ability to copy cards, to spawn copies of cards. That's going to be very useful because it's going to allow you to gain strength. But you're also going to be buffing. If your opponent plays a lot of cards, you're going to be giving your opponent a lot of strength. And one of the things I'm thinking about is that card being played against, say, my Monsters Readables deck. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. You imagine a, a whole row of Arrakis and a whole row of Neckers being given a two buff because of that. They've played that card. That's going to be in. That's going to backfire on them terribly. That is going to be a huge, huge decision to play that card. Again, it's going to be a strategy. When do you put him in? When do you, when do you play him against certain decks? Um, another card I noticed that was changed in the in the in the patch, or is going to be changed in the patch, is the Burner Bran Skellige card. Um, originally, she drew four cards, allowed you to keep one, and discarded the rest. They've nerfed her down a bit now. You only draw three cards now. You keep one, then discards the other two. They're trying to, I think, slow down. The um, Skelliger discard deck, you know, the discard strategy, where basically you're just milling through loads and loads and loads of cards, getting them into the graveyard to give yourself options with your with your, your priestesses later on and things like that, you know, to resurrect and replay cards in the later rounds. And also certain cards, obviously, that benefit from being discarded like, yeah, like your clamor crates, where when they're discarded, they're played. They're actually played on the board rather than put in the graveyard. So basically, you're getting a free, you're gaining a card as well as putting a unit down. And, a, you know, things like um, the units that get buffed when they're moved to the graveyard, when they're resurrected, they gain a four to base strength or whatever it is, the Axeman. Um, so again, things like that. Are going to be affected by the fact that you're not able to discard as many many cards and of course another thing with the discard strategy that they're trying to i suppose change and slow down is the change they're making to um madman lugos madman lugos in the current build of the game when you play him he gains one strength for every unit in your graveyard 
But now, when you play after the patch, when the patch drops, when you play Madman Lugus, he only gets that buff after two turns. So you put him down as a four strength unit. Your opponent plays, you play, and then for every unit in your graveyard, his strength will walk by one. So it takes a couple of turns before you get that buff and get that effect. So again, it's going to change the way Skellige people play because a lot of people will keep this card in their hand till it's the last card and it's their last play because they know, boom. And usually at that point, your opponent hasn't got many cards and can't deal with it. But now you're forced to put this card down earlier because you obviously need those turns to proc him, to get his, his buff applied. So you need to play him two turns earlier. And being a four strength gold unit, it means basically that your opponent can remove him. If he's got a Yorveth or something like that, or a, you know, a Radovid, he can be wiped off the board before he gains any strength to you. So yeah, I can see some people will be maybe changing the way they look at this card. He may not be a, a staple feature in Skellige decks. I've used him. I've used him in a deck. And for that very reason that, you know, in the third and final round, as your, if you like, last play, it pretty can be a big swing. It can be a big swing in score. Because, of course, he's not going to be affected by weather and things like that. So, and if you've got a lot of cards in your graveyard, a lot of units, he gets buffed up quite a lot. So... Yeah, that change is going to be a pretty big one, I think. Now, some other changes as well that were in the in the stream that I haven't been able to capture any reason because it was only talked about, it was only mentioned, it wasn't really shown. Um, Siri. Siri is getting a big nerf in the next patch. Currently, she's an 8 strength gold unit um, that if you loot, play and then lose the round, she comes back to your hand so you can play her again in the next round. And basically, you know, keep an eight strength unit for two rounds. Um, well, she's getting dropped to six strength, which again means she can be removed <laughs> from the board. You know, your opponent can remove her. So it doesn't matter whether you win the round or lose the round, you will lose her from the board. So, yeah, a lot of people, certainly I've seen, certainly you see it when you, you're playing matches and you're playing, a lot of people tend to play Siri. You know, they put her out there because they know, A, you're going to have to play a couple of cards to beat her, right? counter her eighth strength. And if they give up the round, they get in that back. So again, in the next round, they can play her and know that you've got to play a couple of cards to counter her strength to get in front again. So it's a bit of a, um, it's a, I think it's a, it's a good change, definitely. Siri, again, it's one of them cards now people will probably look up, maybe replacing in some decks. You probably won't see her quite as much as you do. She's pretty much included in every single deck at this point because why not she's an eighth strength card that if you lose the round you get to play again in the next one <laughs> so yeah she's getting a, a nerf <laughs> getting an adjustment um also we have got um gerol igni now this card I know absolutely infuriates a lot of players. A lot of players think this card is seriously overpowered. Not only because it's a gold unit that gives you, you know, six strength, seven strength in its current form, which can be played on any row on your your board, but it also does the scorch on your opponent's row and removes their strongest units. And currently, if your opponent, if opponent's row is over 15 strength, when you apply Geralt's Igni to that row, it will scorch the strongest units on that row. It has to be over 15. If their strength is not over 15, you won't scorch anything. 
And again, a lot of players felt that that card is just too strong. It just does too much. It just swings rounds too too greatly. Um, and certain decks, unfortunately, get absolutely hammered by it. Um, I'm specifically thinking and talking about monsters here. You know, with their with their breedables because all their units, if they you know you know they get like you know they play the Neckers for example, they buff them up with Thunderbolt or Gels. Igni comes down, wipes out the whole flipping row, completely destroys their their strength and pretty much loses them the round, possibly even the match. Uh, depending on obviously which round that happens in. So Geralt Igni has been changed. He now only applies his Scorch effect to rows that are a 20 strength or above. So again now, smart players will think to themselves, okay, my opponent may have Igni. I need to make sure I keep my row strength below 20. You know, 19 melee row, 19 ranged row, 19 siege row, and Geralt Igni is powerless. Then, he, you know, he he can't affect you. He can't he can't scorch you. Um, again, good change because obviously now you could play. You know, if again going back to the monster example, you play your Neckers, you get you. You use your Gale's leader ability, buffs them up to six. They go to 18 strength. They can't be scorched by Geralt. Igni. And removed, which is pretty good going. Um, there's a couple of other changes as well that were covered as well. Going back to like some of the medic stuff, I think in the in the Northern Realms deck, Shani has been changed. She's no longer a gold unit. Or is going to be no longer going to be a gold unit, which means again she can be destroyed, she can be wiped out. It also means again she's going to have like the uh, fleeting permadeath type um, categories applied to her, so you're not going to be able to reuse her and reapply her in the um, in other rounds or with medics and stuff so again it's going to stop again the spam the chaining break up some of the combos that are just too too overpowered too overpowered in the in in the in the game at the moment um and then of course we move on to the the next bit of stuff that obviously was showcased which was the the fact that they're now going to have actual ranked matches now, ranked play will be unlocked when you reach a certain level, so you will have to play the game normally for a bit with random matchmaking, just random matchmaking matches. Till you reach a certain level, then you can unlock ranked play, which will allow you to play ranked matches, and that will, of course, bring us in nicely to the fact that they're also changing the way the leveling system currently works in the game. Um, obviously, at the moment, you get that little bar with broken up into little steps, which shows you where you're going to receive your rewards, but it doesn't really give you a lot of information as to what XP you're actually being awarded for winning matches and how much XP you actually need to reach the next level. Well, they've redone the, the leveling system. It's now a proper bar, which again will show you... Um, exactly how much XP you have currently, how much you need to get to the next level, and it shows you how much XP you got for your last match. Uh, for things like you started the match, and if you were given good game, if you gave good game at the end of the match, you, it shows you the XP you get for that. You're still gonna get your all and scrap rewards, that's not gonna change, but at least it lets you see now exactly how you are progressing and basically what you're actually being rewarded for your play to see you know when because there are times certainly in the current leveling system where it feels like you're playing match after match after match 
you're not getting any rewards. You don't seem to be progressing towards that next level very quickly. And you're a little bit unsure why. So a lot of people tend, tend to stop playing. Wait to the following day when it obviously gets reset. And then it's like, yeah, now we play. Because now I know I, I, I win two matches. And I'm going to get two lots of rewards and a level. So it's going to make it easier to see the progression wise. And it's also going to hopefully mean that more people are going to play more matches each day because they're going to be able to see their progress and not just play, you know, I'm going to play, I'm going to try and win six matches, do get my two levels, and then I'm going to wait till tomorrow, do, do it again. <laughs> and of course, once you've got rank playing, we're going to have leaderboards. So you can actually be able to see where you are in the Gwent playing community and see how you're, you stack up against fellow players. It's going to keep track of how many wins you've had, how many losses you've had, how many draws you've had, obviously what level you are, what your current ranking is, and you know, you're know you going to be able to see where you are in the, uh, in the bigger picture of Gwent, and it's going to obviously give people a good chance to see. Something I would like to see on this is obviously be able to click on the actual players and be able to challenge them the people on the leaderboards and send them direct challenges via the leaderboards. That would be a cool feature to have in the game. Also, being able to click on them and see their decks to see what they're running and what their builds are would be great. Obviously, I don't know whether that would be something that's added to the game because obviously you just click on the number one guy, copy all his decks, <laughs> I suppose, and try and pl create copies of his decks from your own card collection. Um, so, but yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice to be able to, you know, click on people and challenge directly challenging them by the leaderboard. So those are some of the changes coming in the patch. Now they did also in the video talk about some of the other things that they're going to be adding to the game at later dates that won't be in this patch, but will be rolling out as the game moves through beta and moves towards its full release we are going to get a load of um premium cards added to the added to the game which if anyone's playing the beta now you know the Geralt card the animated one that's considered a premium card because it's animated and it has that effect well there's going to be a whole load of them being added to the game pretty much every card is going to get a premium version that's animated and they showcase they showed off a few of them in the in the stream like your he he's basically dropping through the trees and he's got leaves and that flying past him and he's firing an arrow and the arrow moves around so yeah it looks pretty cool um there's the um fern and roach card he's there you know hiding in the trees and an arrow hits the tree and he turns around again nice little animation the the bernard brand card that i showed earlier that's going to have obviously the water, the rain, and everything coming through the, the scene to animate that and give that some atmosphere. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. And hopefully, once we get all these animated cards, hopefully that when they're played on the board, their animations will be playing, so it makes the board look a bit more lively. You know, you'll be able to, the board will be a bit more alive in front of you on the screen. That will be quite cool to have. Obviously, they're going to be adding loads of new cards. They did detail and highlight a couple but i'm not going to go into them in this video um with the exception of one which will be the inclusion of another Geralt card Geralt ard we've already got igni well they're going to be adding Geralt ard and basically what Geralt ard does when you play that card you basically can pick up an entire row of your opponent's cards and shift them to the next row up so if you grab the melee row you're going to shift them to into the range slot if you pick up the you know the range row you're going to move that to siege and i assume if you pick up the siege slot it going to it's going to roll that round and play it in the melee row and then what it does is it removes two strength from all the cards in that row quite a powerful card from the sounds of it and also i think already my mind's working through that could be very useful if you play if you've got weather on the board and your opponent's playing around that. I'm thinking Square Tell 
they have a lot of cards that can be played on any row. So they don't tend to be affected by weather because they can play it and then play their cards around it. Well, again, now, Gerald Ard gives you that option of, yeah, they've played the, the weathers on the board. They've dodged it with all their, you know, units, basically. Well, again, now what you could do is grab those units and shift them into the weather. <laughs> Which I'm hoping, then, from how the card works, I'm hoping that once those units are shifted into the weather, they obviously get affected by the weather. So I'm hoping they'll all get removed down to one strength because of the weather. And then, I'm hoping with Geralt Ard's ability of remove two strength from all units, it will wipe out pretty much that whole row of cards that aren't immune to weather. That could be very, very strong card to have in certain decks against and played against certain decks. Very, very strong card. It would be nice, again, looking at a card like that, if there could be one, and again, this is just me thinking ahead now, if there was a card that allowed you to move your cards. So you could have a card in your deck that you played and it allows you to move one of your rows to another row. Again, that would be fantastic in matches where you've been hit by weather and you've got a whole load of cards sat currently in weather. You could shift them out of it and they get rebuffed. That would be great. <laughs> that would be great CD Projekt Red if you're you're watching this video or you know you're taking any feedback think about adding that as a special card maybe the ability to shift your units that would be fantastic so yes that was a look at the updates coming in the new um, Gwent patch I hope you've enjoyed the video uh, I hope you've liked the video uh, please feel free to hit the like button you know leave me any comments feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me and um i'll see you all again very soon goodbye for now catch you later